What is it about Christianity, Christian Seventh-day Adventism, that, that has us not as excited about what's happening in church anymore? Why is it that we're leaving? Why is it that we're not as engaged? Why is it that we're not giving? Why is it that we're not as supportive anymore? And I want to talk a little bit about that, but I want to get your thoughts and ideas first. And there's a microphone so anybody can hear, and the first person is always going to be uh, the most difficult. Yeah, a r real conversation that, uh, that we're going to have. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. You can help if somebody wants to go. And you guys have this conversation at Sabbath dinner, so don't not have it now. <laughs> exactly that. Right. We should talk about Sabbath dinner. This is the kind of stuff. See, anybody, anybody, hands up so we can get this thing going. Hey. So I would say one of the reasons we're having issues here is because um, for a lot of the churches in the GTA, we have um, a very heavy... I guess West Indian influence, a lot of our parents um, are from the Caribbean, some of us as well, or we're first generation Canadians, and a lot of the, I guess, standards for the service, how the service should be run, what kind of services we should have, um, they're cultural in some part, and so there's a disconnect, and there's an unwillingness to kind of conform or make some adjustments, some concessions, some compromises in terms of integrating um, new ideas, very stuck on uh, tradition and how it used to be and this is how it should be and, and an unwillingness to, I guess, be malleable. Okay, okay. Anybody else kind of agree with that? A little bit? Okay, now I'm not West Indian so I can't necessarily speak uh, completely to that and I, you know, for lack of trying to be generalizing with everybody, because I'll be very, very, very honest, I mean, the, the music, you know, for the praise teams is just like, I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to pack y'all up and, <laughs> and take you back, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to, to California. Uh, but um, that's a very interesting concept, and let, let's unpack that for a little bit, because I don't think you only find that in West Indian culture, but I think you'll just find that maybe in Adventist culture in general. Um, typically, if you are a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you have a conservative bent. That's just the way things kind of go. We have kind of have that kind of look around us, which is very interesting because if you really go back to our history, we weren't all that conservative, really. Um, we were activists, we were a part of movements and, and all different kinds of things like that, which is why our church was called a movement. Uh, people want to talk about music and not allowing certain things, but it's so funny, and this is, this is history, you can't argue with this, Ellen White would probably not have been allowed to do what she did in some of our churches. She would come in, her and her husband James, and they would walk down the aisle banging tambourines. That's what they, that's what they would do to start uh, you know, worship services. But here's the thing that I think is interesting, the bigger picture. Is God bigger than culture? Yes. And we gotta be careful, you know, and we say yes, of course. But is God bigger than any culture? And see, so here's a question that is, is very important, and here's what's so funny. If we were to transplant ourselves back during the time of Jesus, would we be, the way you hear a lot of things talk based on you know, what Sis just said, would we be on the side, do you think, more of the Pharisees or on the side of Jesus? That's a scary thought. Because what were the Pharisees always upholding? Tradition. They were like, oh, no, you, do not heal that person. Why? Sabbath. Sabbath. The tr tr tradition says that we don't do this. And what was Jesus always kind of bucking, having to buck against? Tradition. And did Jesus have a problem with tradition? Yes. He only had a problem with the tradition that wasn't grounded and rooted in and this. And here's the other thing about the tradition. He never wanted tradition to get in the way of saving somebody else. So, see, one of the issues that we have to have, and this is where it does become a, a different model, which is why I always encourage young people uh, not to simply complain about it or simply talk about it, but you have got to become extremely familiar with this. Because I'm telling you, when you have these kind of conversations, it can't be simply about, well, we want to do this and we want to do this. It has to be, well, this is what this says. See, if you can speak from what this said, and let me tell you, the answer to what you just said is actually found 
right here in Scripture. It, it completely is found in Scripture. The thing that we have to understand that we do have to work against is we have to ask ourselves a question. What is more important, upholding our traditions or being able to let somebody see Jesus in a new way? That's what's extremely important because here's the thing that, 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 that's crazy. When I was growing up, they didn't have text messages. Think about that. They did not have text messages. But now we have text messaging. And what can I do with that text message? Now I can send you dirty pictures and all that kind of stuff, right? I can do that. But you know what people can also do? I can send Bible texts every single day yeah, right. to all of my contacts. Yeah, that's, right. that's a brand new way of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some people say, oh, I, I know some churches, they say, oh, put those phones away inside church. It is abomination unto the Lord to bring your phone inside church unless you're a doctor and you need to you know, check up on something. But you know what? We embrace it a little bit. It's different, not according to tradition. We have people who tweet all the time in our church, and I've had people who've never heard of an Adventist church who followed somebody, who followed somebody on Twitter, and they started coming to my church. Yes, yes. yes. So they step foot inside the building. So what we have to ask ourselves is, is the traditions that we're continually to uphold, is it helping us save individuals, get individuals rather closer to Jesus, or is it hindering us in some way? And if we see the different ways that it is hindering us, then I think we need to ask ourselves the question, does going against this tradition break any biblical principle? That's the thing. And so, I'd love to say that's an easy thing to do, but I also have a heart for uh, another generation that might have these traditions. And please don't think that it's only the older folk. Because I've got a group of young folk at my church that if I wear jeans on the pulpit, <laughs> I mean, they lose their mind. They lose their mind. And that argument's a little funny to me. You know some people say, oh, don't run on the pulpit and, and don't get up there because the pulpit is like holy. And I'm like... Isn't the whole campus holy? Like, you guys can trash the bathroom, but make sure the pulpit's okay. I said, no, God's presence is in the bathroom, too. Amen. 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 There's nothing wrong, there's something wrong with a church that got 